My name is Anjali and I'm a chef. I've been in the food industry for more than 13 years and I'm extremely happy today to be a part of Good Food with Good Times. So I started off uh, as a chef at Taj, uh, moved into opening up other restaurants and then finally I went into the television industry and the last most exciting job that I had was I was the food head for MasterChef India for about three seasons. So today I would love to show you a recipe that comes from the eastern part of our country. Uh, there is a huge confusion and a conflict whether it comes from Orissa or it comes from West Bengal. Yes, you guessed it right. We're going to be making Ras Malai today. What you need to make for Ras Malai is the Chena, uh, where in Bengal side you would call it Chana. So to make Chena, you need to split the milk. So let's start with boiling some milk. And cow's milk. So we're using cow's milk to make the Ras Malai today. I'm bringing it up to a boil and then I'm going to split it. How are we going to split it? So basically you need some sort of acid to split it. You could use lemon juice, you could use vinegar, but I'll be using vinegar today because lemon juice, there's a lot of work to be done. You squeeze it out, then you strain it off. Vinegar is simple to use, fast to use. So I'm going to be using that. Split it when it's extremely hot. The chana that you will get will be hard. Okay, many a time people tell me that their chana has turned out very hard. So that is when you do it when you are uh, splitting it when it is hot. Do not do that. And another thing is, uh, we want the chana to be big in size. We don't want those mini mini pieces of chana. We want big pieces of chana. So for both of those reasons, it's very important to first cool down the milk slightly. Not extensively, slightly. So I switched off the milk and I must have waited for about 4 to 5 minutes. That's it. Vinegar right here. This is about 20 ml of vinegar. So for 2 liters of cow's milk, I have about 20 ml of vinegar. Now you will not directly add this vinegar either. How will we do it? We have equal quantity of water as well. So I'm going to mix the two of these. So in another bowl, I add the vinegar and the water. So a little bit and then move it with a gentle hand. A little more again with a gentle hand there is the chana and do you see the size of the chana now they're nice and big and extremely soft so it's very important that now we don't mix it too much all right and now what we're going to do is immediately add about a liter of cold water to it why? Because we want to stop the cooking process immediately. We don't want the chana to cook in this hot whey liquid that we have. To strain this so that we have the chana separate and the whey separate. Add some more cold water and rinse off the flavor of the vinegar from this chena. Bring the edges of the muslin cloth together so that you can hang this for some time. Squeeze out the excess whey as much as you can. Now that I've squeezed out as much whey as I could, I'm going to hang this for about 2 to 3 hours so that as much more whey can get out, let it get out. So Ras Malai is made out of two words, Ras and Malai. Ras will come a little later, let's start off with the Malai part. For the Malai, I require about a litre of full fat milk, which I'm going to reduce to half, okay? So here goes the milk. So that's one litre of full fat milk. I'm going to heat it up and on a slow heat, I'm going to reduce it to half the quantity, okay? The milk has reduced by half, so it's become nice and thick and creamy. Half a cup of sugar to this. Now that 
that we have this nice sweet milk, I'm going to add a little bit of kesar to it. So there I have some kesar right here. It's just a pinch of kesar does the trick. Slightly cool down while we make our rasmalai. Add two teaspoons of corn flour. Roll it into a nice smooth ball, and then make it into a long log. Use a dough cutter or a knife and cut them into equal sizes. From this 2 liters of milk, I got about 16 pieces. Now this is what we are looking for, a smooth ball. Now take it into your palm and flatten it. Roll it between your palms to get a smooth dough. Cover so it doesn't dry off. So now that the rasmalai balls are ready, let's start making the chashni so we can cook these tiny rasmalais. Okay, so for that, so I have this stock pot right here. I'm going to be adding one cup of sugar to this. I'm going to be adding 5 cups of water. So the ratio is 1 is to 5. I'm going to bring it up to a rippling boil. So when I mean a rippling boil is that it has to be, it has to be aggravated. It has to be moved. There has to be a lot of movement happening in it. Okay. So all the bubbles should be bubbling really fast. That is the time when we can add the rasmalais to it. So I'm shutting this and letting it come to a rippling boil. Have the sugar syrup rapidly boiling. It's ready for the rasmalai. But before that, I like to flavor it a little. So I have these rose petals here. So I'm going to be adding these rose petals to this. So come, I'll show you how to flatten these rasmalai balls. So here we had kept it for rest. So take one of the balls, press it down between your palms like that. Then roll it up a little. Now that you have a nice ball, just flatten it slightly. That's it. You don't want it to be very thin. You don't want it to be very flat. And now we're going to drop it into this rippling boiling sugar syrup. Drop it right at the center where it is boiling the most. And you will notice that in a few seconds it will come up to the top. Close one more, right in the center. And don't add too many into the stock pot at a time. Okay? You don't want them to crowd it themselves. Why? Because now we're going to shut it and they're going to become double in size. Okay? So there goes my lid. I'm going to shut it and allow it to boil for about 5 minutes. Five minutes. Let's check out our rasmalais. There. So do you see how beautifully they have doubled in size? Nice and pretty, perfect circles. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to turn them over. So obviously they cook from one side, we need to cook them from the other side. So I'm turning them over very gently. Just touch it, turn it over. Be very gentle about them. They're like little clouds. Beautiful and perfect. So we'll wait for 5 more minutes and then they're almost ready. Whoa! So it's been about 5 minutes on one side and 5 minutes on the other side and they are more than double in size. This is what we were looking for. 
Now this is a very important trick. Okay. Now that your rasmalai are almost cooked and you've got this ice water ready, what you need to do is take some of this sugar syrup, this warm hot sugar syrup, and add it to this ice cold water. Basically, what you're trying to do is create a thin sugar syrup over here. A nice thin sugar syrup so that we can get our rasmalai into this. There. So that is ready. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these rasmalai into that thin sugar syrup. And why are we doing that? Because now that the rasmalai are cooked, we need to stop this cooking process immediately. We don't want these rasmalai to cook any further. And that is the reason why we are dropping them into this ice cold water. This will stop their cooking process and they will remain nice and soft. There goes my last rasmalai into the cold sugar syrup. Now what we are going to do is, we want this to be in this for just about 3-4 minutes so it cools down. And then we are going to transfer this into the malai. Please. My god, see how soft they are. Now, just slightly squeeze it out. So you squeeze out this excess sugar syrup that is there because we want it to actually soak this. We want it to soak this malai. So I drop it in this. So similarly, take it, slightly squeeze out the sugar syrup and then drop it in the malai. So we want this to remain in the malai for at least half an hour, okay, minimum half an hour so that it soaks in all the beautiful quesadilla milk and then we can serve. But a lot of people like it nice and cold. So let it soak at room temperature for about half an hour. Once it comes to like a nice cool down, put it in the fridge about 3-4 hours and then serve it for dinner. Really beautifully topped with the little almonds and little pistachios. I'll do it for you. Do look watch. Garnish with slivers of almonds and pistachios and few dried rose petals. And that's my quesadilla rasmalai. Thank you for watching. See you soon.